Tonight, Canada's airwaves are crackling with a new type of tension, and it is not coming from the icy temperatures in the north or the storms that are brewing in the Atlantic. Boardrooms, briefing rooms, hangars, and quiet military runways are the places where decisions are being made that will shape the next 50 years of national defense. This information is coming from on the inside of the country. There is an unexpected proliferation of the Gripen name. It is whispered by engineers. It is studied by pilots. It is a topic that politicians discuss behind closed doors. And now, a potent new component has been introduced into the scene. The Rolls-Royce brand. The name carries with it the weight of history, power, precision, and precision. The tale of procurement is not a straightforward one. A change in gravity has occurred here. This represents a change in velocity. When Canada looks up to the sky, it is saying that it wants power, that it wants choice, and that it wants a future that is made by its own hands with partners that it trusts. One can no longer consider the Grapen to be only an aircraft on a proposal sheet. A sign of self-sufficiency, adaptability, and intelligent strength, it is becoming increasingly popular. It would be a bold signal to the rest of the world if a British-built engine were to be installed inside of a Swedish fighter plane and used to serve Canadian skies. It moves really quickly. The sensation is electric. I have the impression that something significant is going to come to life. Once upon a time, the F-35 appeared to be a good option, an aesthetically pleasing stealth frame that was constructed by American industry and is supported by a vast network of allies. A total of 88 of them were planned for Canada. On paper, that plan didn't make any sense. Stealth, sensor fusion, and close cooperation with our partners in the United States and NATO were all features that it offered. However, time has passed. Costs kept going up. The delays in the program continued to accumulate. The extent of the maintenance exceeded what was promised. It was clear from each new report that the lifetime price was steadily increasing with millions of dollars piling up on top of millions of dollars. The concept of straightforward ownership became less prevalent. The truth of reliance suddenly became more apparent. Washington served as the hub for the flow of software control, upgrade permissions, spare parts, and political approval chains. Every single modification, every single improvement, and every single deployment path went through foreign controlled gates. The burden started to become clear to Canada Indeed, it is not just the monetary burden, it is the weight of sovereignty. The understanding that having control over the sky also means having control over the decisions that are made. Simultaneously, the Gripen E increased its rate of acceleration. The Swedish defense manufacturer Saab, which was responsible for it, did not sell glittering things. Logic was sold by them. Their performance was based on the truth of the situation. Runways that are rather short, a difficult environment, the temperature is chilly, quick turnaround times are required, not much of a ground crew, a strong familiarity with digital technology, very prompt response. Countries that need to respond from dispersed bases, highways, or distant areas were the target audience for the Gripen's design. It is not necessary for the infrastructure to be flawless. It is able to. It still exists. It strikes and then soars once more. The idea seems to be a perfect fit for the vast, snowy, and stretched terrain of Canada, as if it were developed specifically for it. Reliability is essential for operations in the North. Longevity is required for them. It is imperative that they have a machine that continues to function even when everything else freezes or cracks. That is the world that the Gripen was designed for. Then there is the problem with the engine, which is the most important part of the aeroplane and the secret anchor of worldwide control. Because the current Gripen is powered by an engine manufactured in the United States, it is inextricably linked to U.S. export regulations and prohibition. Even just that one component holds significant political weight. Under particular circumstances, the aeroplane is not allowed to take off if the United States does not provide its approval. In the event that relations get strained, permissions become more stringent. In this manner, contemporary control operates. This is not through loud announcements, but rather through components that are quiet. This is the point at which Rolls-Royce completely changes the strategic landscape. An option for a British engine completely alters things. The American shadow is eliminated from the interior of the aircraft as a result. Through this, the Gripen receives a new passport. It transforms into a platform that is really European, liberated from the technological shackles of Washington. This means that Canada will have genuine freedom of choice as well as genuine authority over its operation. It is not a secret gatekeeper without a silent leash, a capability that is supported by allies that take Canada's independence into consideration. 
At this point, the narrative expands beyond the confines of a single aeroplane. Suddenly, it is about a nation redefining its role in the world. Canada has for a very long time maintained a balance between its close connection with the United States and its desire to maintain its independence. Over the past few years, conflicts and trade have brought to everyone's attention how quickly friendship may turn into pressure. Tariffs imposed on steel and aluminium are extremely damaging. Confidence was damaged by political hyperbole. This caused a shift in both public opinion and political perspective. No longer was defense limited to the military alone. It was a financial decision. It was on a national scale. In addition, the Gripen provided something that the F-35 was never able to fully accomplish. The manufacture of goods locally, local jobs, it is local control. The idea made by Saab went beyond simply selling jets. A collaboration was made available. In Canada, assembly lines are used. A collaborative effort with Canadian businesses. Thousands of new jobs are being created. The development of skills, knowledge transfer, the concept that Canadian hands would be responsible for the construction of the machines that protect Canadian skies struck a chord that cannot be measured by statistics. The possibility of Bombardier becoming an industrial partner was brought up throughout the session. Not only does it carry excellent engineering DNA, but it also carries scars from difficult times in the past. The danger is very real. In addition, the potential is really real. Production in the defense industry has the potential to revitalize an industry, restore dignity, and produce a new generation of professionals if it is managed properly. The deal for the Gripen started out as a fighter program, but it eventually evolved into a national industrial ambition. It is not only what is able to fly, but also what is constructed on the ground. A different event was taking place on a global scale. Over time, the Grapen began to be seen in an increasing number of fleets. Brazil settled on it. It was investigated by other air forces as a new system to replace older ones. It stood out due to its cost effectiveness. When compared to the F-35, the operating cost per hour is significantly cheaper. Simpler maintenance is required. There are fewer resources needed for missions. What is important in the real world is that infinite budgets are not available. When it comes to power, nations are re-evaluating their definitions. Not necessarily the most expensive option. It is the most adaptable, most environmentally friendly. This is the most deployable. The evolution of the Gripen is not solely a technical one. On a political level, it is a symbol of a world that is gradually transitioning away from a single source of domination and working towards multi-centered power. At this moment, Canada is confronted with a multifaceted and intricate decision. Even now, the F-35 maintains its stealth capabilities and improved penetration capabilities. The integration with American systems is brought about by it. These aspects cannot be disregarded in any way, but the Gripen offers a number of advantages including independence, affordability, agility, and industrial return. A diverse fleet starts to look more sophisticated. Stealth missions and combined operations are both possible with F-35s. Gripens for the purpose of maritime sovereignty patrols, rapid response, defense in the Arctic, and everyday preparedness. The hybrid method provides a sense of equilibrium. The risk is decreased, reliance is spread via it. Strengthening national control without compromising partnerships is the result of this. In a world that no longer provides straightforward solutions, this is a pragmatic way of doing things. In addition, precisely in the thick of this momentum, this is the point at which the story begins to peak in terms of its intensity. Take a moment right now to show your support for the channel if you find that this research is providing you with value and if this kind of in-depth, no-nonsense deconstruction is causing you to view defense and geopolitics in a somewhat different light. Take a like. Talk about this with someone who is passionate in aviation or international policy, that more people are able to comprehend what is actually taking place behind the scenes of the headlines and behind the metal skin of a fighter plane is made possible by this. The potential participation of Rolls-Royce is more than just an improvement in terms of technology. The message is a political statement that was crafted out of metal and fire. The United Kingdom repositions itself as a key defense partner in the that will exist after Brexit. When it comes to NATO-aligned security structures, Sweden is becoming increasingly relevant. Regaining control over its own protection is a priority for Canada. The change is even noticeable in Washington. It was not with rage, but rather with astonishment. A subtle but powerful signal is sent by the concept that a loyal partner could reroute a portion of its defense architecture away from direct supervision by the United States. It is not a rejection at all. This is the process of evolution. 
This is not a friend who is receding, but rather one who is gaining stronger. The thrust curves, heat tolerance, fuel efficiency, and maintenance cycles are all things that the engineers take into consideration. The generals take into consideration the survivability rate, the readiness percentage, and the sortie rate. The politicians consider various factors, including public acceptability, economic gain, and alignment with foreign policy. All of those numbers are starting to coincide in a different way now. A Gripen that is powered by an engine from the United Kingdom, supported by industry from Canada, engineered for tough conditions, and priced at a level that is sustainable becomes more than competitive within the market. This makes it really convincing. Every flight is a message in and of itself. Every takeoff is a message in and of itself. Each landing on an icy strip serves as further evidence that the proper machine, when operated by the right people, has the potential to remake an entire doctrine. Because of its geography, Canada deserves respect. Continually a tundra, a vast stretch of seashore, a small number of people, not any simple roads. In this location, air power is not a luxury. The threat of connection and the shield of protection are both represented by it. The airplane that is selected today will be in operation long after the leaders of today have passed away. In the event that new dangers materialize and new partnerships are formed, it will be put into service. This discussion is driven by that long vision, which is what drives it so deeply. It is not a hype narrative about the Gripen. Specifically, it is a case study in the process of matching technology to terrain and machines to missions. Everything about it, including its sensors, its data links, its capacity to take in new software, and its rapid maintenance cycle, is in perfect harmony with the reality of Canada. A strike on the F-35 is not being attempted here. It continues to be one of the most technologically advanced fighters that have ever been constructed. That is a tremendous amount of power. In spite of this, power is not simply raw technology. Smart alignment is what it is. It is not about impressing a crowd, but rather about choosing what fits your reality. Public attention is being paid by the Canadian people. Investors are paying attention to this. The attention of other nations is being paid today, simply because this is a moment of signaling. A developed nation that is publicly reevaluating a significant American defense commitment in favor of a solution that is more adaptable, independent, and supported by European networks. That happens very infrequently. What a brave move! The Gripen does not guarantee that it will be perfect. There is no machine that can. Efficiency is guaranteed by it. The speed of response is guaranteed by it. There is a promise of sovereignty. Sovereignty in the modern world does not mean being isolated from others. It is about interdependence that is properly managed. Deciding on companions rather than masters? Instead of giving up choice, sharing strength is encouraged. A Gripen that is powered by Rolls-Royce is the ideal representation of that. A heart that is British, body that is Swedish, a mission from Canada. Against the backdrop of an Arctic sky, three flags are weaved together to form a silhouette. Data from simulations, flight tests, and risk assessments are continued to be conducted behind the scenes. All aspects are scrutinized by committees. But one thing is unmistakable. There has been a permanent shift in the debate. It is no longer the case that Canada is merely adopting a course. Currently, it is working on designing one. On the other hand, this is what it means to have true defense independence. It begins a very long time before the very first jet ever took off from the Earth. In order to pursue a different future with confidence, it is necessary to have the courage to rethink, compare, and imagine an alternative future. The events of this story are still unfolding. Decisions are going to be made. Contracts are going to be signed or reformed shortly. It's possible that factories will increase, Training will be provided for new pilots. There will be the writing of new doctrines. As a consequence, the result will be carried by the skies above Canada. When that day comes, people will look back and say that the turning point was when the discourse over the Gripen became more prominent, sharper, and louder, and when Rolls-Royce entered the picture and altered the entire balance of power behind the scenes. Continue to follow this story. Maintain your awareness of the genuine shifts that are coming to shape the world of national power aircraft and defense. And if you are looking for other breakdowns that are as detailed, quick, and straightforward as this one, now is the time to get them. Appreciate the video? Sign up for the channel's channel. Put notifications into action. Be a part of the group of people who spot it approaching before it completely disappears from view.